Hey YouTube world, welcome back to the TST Garage. I am Mark, this is an MT-03, and this is the build series. In our last video, we did show off the things we had previously installed. Uh, we did get into our quick turn throttle kit. We talked about the core motor brake lines, our Gillis tooling rear sets, and our Olin's rear shock. And while we were filming, we got a special delivery thanks to UPS. Um, they got us our Misano cartridge kit from Andriani. Thanks to the guys over at Fast Bike Industries and Birch Waterwitz for helping us get these, uh, obtaining them. They're something that we've been dying to install, uh, especially after we installed the rear shock. We found the ergonomics of this bike were thrown off quite a bit. So I'm not sure if you can see, but the fork uh, tops are changed out. We did already install these and uh, my good friend, the guy you know and love, my boss, Bart is here today. Um, he's the one who performed the installation. Thanks for coming in, man. I know you're busy engineering and- uh, yeah, No worries, man. You know, so here we are. What is What do you have in your hand and why did we do this? Uh, this is the rebound side uh, from the OEM setup. We did decide that, you know, we're gonna upgrade suspension on this bike and we did the shock. And it doesn't make sense to do the shock and then not do anything about the front. The OEM setup doesn't really afford you any adjustability. As you can see, the cap here doesn't have any adjusters on it. The only thing that you could really do is uh, get in there and change the spring perhaps, or change your oil. Okay. The oil, if you go with a different weight oil than the OEM, you'll get a different damping characteristic, but it'll just be a linear change and you can't really adapt it to your own liking, to, to your style. So going with an adjustable shock in the back, we wanted adjustability in the front. In the past, in our race program, we've built many bikes with adjustable suspension that really helps tune the bike to the rider and if a different rider is riding it we can change the tune uh, so another aspect of a change like this is taking out these really heavy components and dropping some unsprung mass i believe on the rebound side on the left side there we took this out and we saw a pretty significant change in mass going with the aftermarket stuff uh, on the compression side what we stuck in was actually 30 grams more, but the net effect was from memory, was something like a pound or something. Wow, okay. So that's, that's pretty substantial, I would say. And we are going for lower mass on this bike and we're trying to shave weight off of it to make it into the hooligan project that we've been talking about. Yeah. So that, that all helps. Now for this installation process, kind of kind of guide us through the entire install because obviously you you have to take the forks off of the bike. You have to drop them out of the triple tree system, get the wheel off. There's a lot of it involved. So do you want to take us by a rough step-by-step -step on what, what you did? I could do a really simple step-by-step. -step. Yeah, yeah, show you us. Know, I, you put the bike up on a pin stand in the front. You get the fender off, you get the brake off, and you get your wheel off. Make sure you don't mess up that front speed sensor. If you still have ABS, we've eliminated our ABS. So I'm actually thinking about doing away with that sensor because it does nothing for us. But anyway, if you do have that, be careful around it. Now you've stripped down the bottom, anything that on the bottom that hangs off the forks, you loosen this and this and the fork comes off. And this is the triple tree, triple yep. clamp system. So yep. you have the upper and the lower. Yep, single gotcha. bolt for each. And that drops them off. So then, you know, we open them up, we drain them, we remove the internals. There's a Allen bolt from the bottom of the fork that comes out and the cartridge comes out and we replace it with the new cartridge, torque it properly, and there's nothing really to it. You know, a little bit of cleaning in between, making sure there's no debris inside. And then we could fill it up, uh, milk out the air from the cartridge and do the level, close it back up. Now you said drain out the old fluid. Do you replace it with the same fluid? Do you put oh, no, fresh no, no. fluid in? No, we, we went with five weight. This okay. is what's recommended by Andriani. We actually use uh, Owens oil. You know, then we just do the level based on what it says on the box. It says 110, boom, good to go. Done. And awesome. then once it's back in and everything's built up, that's when we do the adjustments. Now on this side, it's a little bit more convoluted. Everything has to come apart. So you have to bang out, you have to take the clip out, you have to take the dust seal out, uh, bang out, the, the bushes and the main seal, and you have to disassemble the whole thing. Then you have to take the inner tube out of the stanchion, which is where I had my hang up. Okay. There's a set screw from inside that goes against the threads that thread this inner tube into this piece. And that's where it was galled up. So I tried to fix it inside that little eight millimeter hole. I did my best and then I just yeah. have to muscle it out, clean off the threads, make sure 
all the threads are restored so I could put it back together and then I rebuilt it with these components. Spring has to come off for, for the assembly. And I reassembled basically in a reverse order of disassembly, but with the new cartridge. Yeah. Filled it up with new oil and did the level after milking out the air, reassembled and all back in. On the OEM setup, we have no preload adjustment, so we can't preload the spring. Okay. Both fork legs now have a preload adjustment. Perfect. I believe there are 11 turns at one millimeter each, so we can vary that preload in length, and that translates to whatever the K factor of the spring is. So for different springs, it'll be different amount of force that you're actually exerting as preload. Uh, these are really cool because they are separated for rebound and compression, so you could just do everything from the top. Is that typical on, on motorcycle forks? Nowadays, it's, it's, it's becoming sort of a standard because okay. nobody wants to get down on the knee. Yeah. Now everything's up top and they separate them. Back in the day, I remember, you know, 2000s, we had compression up top, rebound on the bottom and each leg. And then you had to set both legs for both parameters. Now you just have one, two, and then preload. Wow. And that makes it nice and simple and everything's up in front of you. And I really like these Mizano kits. Yeah. We, we've, we've run them in a couple of bikes and they do a really good job. They, they offer high end materials, yeah. really awesome engineering. And uh, I believe the, the actual rod that slides through the whole thing is DLC coated. Oh, that's awesome. Diamond like carbon. Yeah. So that's really high end stuff yeah. for a price that is surprisingly low. Yeah, I mean, I I know people were, they used to pay like $800 to $1,000 to get something DLC coded. I mean, no, no. obviously it's dropping in price because technology is advancing. Um, now, we have no problem, well, I should say, you had no problem installing this. Is this something that the everyday rider can do in their garage? Should they just take it to a shop? Should they pay for a service? What's, <laughs> give, right. us, give us the lowdown. These things are kind of like, they have moods from yeah. bike to bike. Some come off easy, some not so easy. On these particular ones, there was a set screw that galled up the internals, the internal threads that engage between the stanchion and, and the inner tube. And I had a rough time removing yeah. that. On other bikes, they don't turn it in as much and it comes off really easy. So it really depends. I would say, unless you have the proper tools to do it, yeah. bring it to a shop. Like with everything we sell, if you don't have the proper tools, the resources, the knowledge, or you just don't feel comfortable, take it to a shop. There's no shame in doing that. We do have videos to help you, but if you don't feel safe, if you don't feel comfortable, go to a shop, they'll take care of you. Rebound side, yeah, super easy. Compression, Compression side. side, that was the only one that posed the challenge. Gotcha. And I know these forks, they're not all like that. Yeah. If you lock out and that thread is not galled up, it's good to go. You do need a torch, you need a couple specialty tools that you can't really get around yeah there's uh on the compression side there's a top cap into the inner tube that you need uh like a four pronged wrench for okay which we have uh if you don't have that it's going to be kind of rough i guess you could lock a vice grip onto it but now you're getting into backyard engineering which you can do i mean that's how we started i think yeah yeah well garage garage engineering yes. <laughs> yeah yeah garage engineering fulfillment from top of a washer machine. We did all that. Uh, <laughs> so when it came to setting your height, did you know what you wanted to go with? Is that important? That how is far, very how important. far up should you push the fork legs through? Well, that really depends on what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to set that at the track. Okay. So I went with four millimeters. I went with a profile of geometry that I know will be pretty neutral and won't be set, you know, for crazy, in and out of turn yeah. sort of flicking and it won't be set for driving out of corners it'll be like kind of medium it's right in the middle just from dealing with the r3 yeah. super sport and super bike i've i've done a lot on those platforms so i wanted to, to to put this in where i won't endanger myself when i start out riding and then i could go from there and awesome. then i'll know if i need to drop it raise it yeah uh, i have a feeling that i'm going to need to raise it but I also have adjustability in the back. Yeah. We've jacked up the rear of this bike so much. Uh, I went to 287 millimeters on the shock uh, eye to eye distance. And that I believe is eight plus from OEM. Wow. So I jacked it up. I could actually lower it instead of raising the front. That'll have to 
It's plate. all relative. It's all relative. So to many each other. things yeah. go into geometry setting. We have our wheelbase on this particular bike. We have a very short wheelbase. I do want to extend that. That'll play into what I need to do with the shock, uh, height wise, preload wise, everything. All of these things. I mean, these tiny little adjustments from here to here, uh, everything, the wheelbase, it, it's all going to change the way the bike feels, the way the bike reacts. So just keep that in mind when you are doing certain things that covers the suspension. Now, we also have some brake pads back here and we didn't install them. And the, I think the main reason is we want to see what the limits are right now, right? Yeah. Like, so the goal is we're going to take it to the track. We're going to try and squeeze out and set up as much of the suspension as possible. And we do have the quick turn throttle. We have the new brake levers, the new brake lines. So the brake pads outside of the master cylinder and the rotor and the calipers, are gonna be the next thing that are probably the best bang for your buck, at least yeah, what I think. It's in, super it simple, right. you could change them out in like five minutes. Yeah. And they're inexpensive. Yeah, and these are Vestra RJL pads. These are awesome. Those you are actually, like my favorite for these small bikes. You actually recommended these to me uh, four years ago for my CBR, and ever since then, I was like, well, Vestra is the way to go. Just, and I ride on the street and some on the track. These are awesome pads, and, and we, yeah. do, we do sell them. Uh, we believe in them. We, we use everything we sell. Uh, the, the note about these is that the, the bite is more aggressive yeah. than stock. So if somebody's going from stock to those, they need to ensure that like, they don't grab a handful right away. Go out, ride mildly. Yeah. Break and them in a little bit. Break them in, break yourself into understanding how they work because yeah. they're going to grip more. There's a step above these, the ZZ pads. I don't particularly like those. They scrub out really quickly. Yeah. And on these bikes, you don't need that much braking. If you know what you're doing yeah. at the track, you don't need that much braking. Anything beyond these RJLs and I don't know, you're doing stoppies or something. Yeah. <laughs> so the pads are next. If we find the need for them at the track, we will install them at the track. And then outside of that, if we see we need more braking power, I guess at that point, it would be the master cylinder yeah, or that's... the rotor. We'll get into that. The rotor doesn't really do much more beyond just being able to take more heat. Okay. So less fade. Takes uh, more heat and dissipates it better. Yeah. The, the Brembo rotors that we do typically on these bikes, they're thicker. Yeah. And, um, they're actually floating. So you could drag the brake deeper into, into a corner without feeling the counter force against yeah. you or as much counter force. That helps a little bit, but the, the price is very steep for the performance upgrade there. Yeah. I would say that would probably go after the master. The master is something that I really like. I like the 16 by 18, I think on these bikes, uh, Brembo. It just gives me that feel that I like. Yeah. With this lever, I'm still afraid that I'm going to I'm going to be pulling it yeah. to my knuckles. Okay. Um, but with a, with a 16 by 18, there's, there's no way. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're super stiff They're, And that's a, that's an acquired taste. You know, I have guys ride our bikes and they're like, the brakes are crazy. I don't like this. <laughs> this is, yeah. it's, it's digital. It's nothing and everything, <laughs> but you learn to use one finger and then it's not nothing and everything. You, you do have a very broad range. It's just the way you work with them. Gotcha. So we covered ergonomics, we covered suspension. We talked about the wheelbase. And now this is one of our very first sprockets. This is actually the one that I had on my bike, I believe. This is a TST sprocket made by yours truly. And uh, it's funny because it's kind of in our logo. It's in our name, it's on your leg. Um, so we have sprockets now. And now we can't just swap it's this It's a over. work sprocket. It, it is a work yes, sprocket. It's from our uh, race effort. This we is, developed it for this our is, race team. Yes, this is the culmination of years of racing and uh, a year of winning a national championship on our Superbike R3. Um, we've been able to use that R&D and develop a really awesome sprocket that is lightweight. It looks damn good if I do, if I may say so myself, and it lasts. I mean, I've put a couple thousand miles on mine so far and no issues on the road. Um, and we've put it under high stress on our, on our race bikes. Yeah. So if we, th if we were to throw this on, this is a 43 tooth, I believe. 43 is stock size. 43 is stock. So in theory, we can just slap this on, no issues. But if we decided to go with the 45, we're gonna need a bigger chain, but we don't have enough wheelbase. So we'll have to bring the wheel back and get a much bigger chain. Not much bigger. Two more links. Two more links, okay. I believe it's a 112 stock. And that doesn't afford you a lot of adjustability. Yeah. Now, what we can do is go to a small sprocket in the front and one up in the back. Yeah. And we're going to be roughly close to the same spot that we were at before. Gotcha. But right now, I mean, if you look at the wheelbase, I know you guys can't see it, but it's we're, super short. We're, we're all the way, almost all the way up front on the swing arm. It's, I actually like these bikes like middle to three quarter range back. Okay. 
uh, just in my experience on R3, tuning the suspension geometry, it's, it's easier for me to get everything else tuned into that because that's where most of my knowledge is at gotcha. for, for that wheelbase. Now we have a new shorter wheelbase. Now I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a whole new matrix of, of what works, what doesn't work for that bike and, and test all of those parameters, you know, and that's, that's a lot of testing. Yeah. I would prefer not to do that when I know we have like record pace on the R3s on yeah. some tracks why not just apply it here? That's kind of what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I am going to get a long, longer chain for this. Uh, that will afford me a, a broader range of sprockets that I can use yeah. uh, on longer tracks. We'll go back to probably a 43, maybe a 42, perhaps with a smaller one tooth small on the front um, on tighter tracks. We, we're going to gear a lot shorter and we'll just have a lot more adjustability yeah. that way. And also that'll push the wheelbase to where I like it. So up next, what do we have next? We're going to the track. We're gonna, gonna put all this. Fun. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun. Hopefully we don't crash it, but if we do, we are prepared. Not that getting a workout <laughs> while working on a fork leg is not fun. <laughs> no, let's go ride. Let's if, have some if fun. If these guys videotape me doing that portion, then uh, there would be a lot of bleeping. <laughs> so we're gonna take this to the track. All the stuff that we've done is now gonna actually turn into valuable data for us and not just in the track scene, but also just riding around on the street because the ergonomics are so different. The suspension is going to be way di well, it is way different already, and we're going to set it up even more. So this bike, again, it's going to it's a completely different bike so far, and we are just getting started. We still haven't even touched the motor, the works pack. We still have a ton of stuff we have to get into, but we're trying to find this solid baseline so that we can build this bike around it. I want to install as much of our already pre-built stuff yeah. on this bike as possible and also the parts that I know and trust to, to up the performance for, for myself yeah. and for anybody really. And then we'll really get into some crazy stuff. Awesome. So we hope you guys like this video. Um, be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the notifications on, leave questions, comments, concerns down in the comment field below. Uh, Bart, thank you for coming in. And uh, I, I, I say coming in, I coming into this area. You're always here designing stuff. And My office is li yeah, literally through this, through this wall. wall. Um, thanks for thanks for you know being on video with us and, and giving us some of your expertise. It's hugely hugely valuable and, and appreciative. My pleasure. Um, if you guys have like I said any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments below. For now, we're gonna get ready, do some track prep, get ready to load the trailer up and head to the track. This is Mark Bart. Catch That's you guys next fun. time.